Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and today in this video, I wanna to talk to you about viruses on the Windows platform. Now, for those of you who have known me for a long, long time and watched the Geekanoids channel for many years, you'll know that I'm primarily a Mac user. I use Mac OS X as my platform of choice. That's not to say that they're not infected with viruses as well, and there aren't malware on the Mac OS X platform. There certainly is, but this sort of thing, this problem, is more prevalent on the Windows platform, and that's primarily because there's a bigger user base. Now, I do have a couple of Windows machines myself in the studio and in the editing room, but the little story I wanna to talk to you about today is about another person that contacted me after experiencing something really weird on their Windows-based laptop. Now, basically, what was happening was they were going onto particular websites or typing in a website into the URL bar at the top of their browser, and when they hit the Enter button, they weren't presented with the website they were expecting to visit. They were sort of redirected to another website. And the same happened when they clicked links. They clicked a link to go to a specific website. And again, they ended up somewhere completely different, a different destination. And they were also getting some warning messages come up as well, uh, sort of warning them that their computer was under threat. And this set alarm bells ringing for them and they rang me up and asked for advice. Now, I asked what the computer was, what platform they were running, and it was Windows 8. Did they have any virus software, or virus protection software already installed in their computer? And I was quite surprised to learn that, yes, they did. They had McAfee, uh, I don't know which version, but one of the McAfee antivirus suites on there with a valid subscription as well. Uh, and they were still experiencing these problems. So I did a little bit of uh, research for them and found out that this was a, a known problem and the messages they were getting uh, did indicate that there could be some malware actually installed on their computer. One of the suggestions was to deactivate the McAfee software and to uninstall it and then reinstall it. Now they could do the deactivation, but they didn't have the details or the knowledge to actually do the reinstallation of the software. So I suggested they contacted McAfee support. And what ended up happening was McAfee actually contacted them by telephone and uh, talked them into giving them remote access to the laptop so they could have a look. And then they offered to remove the offending software uh, for a fee. So they charged them £60 to remove this software from their laptop. Now, they thought that was uh, a reasonable or worthwhile value because they paid the money and they got access back to a computer that seemed to be free of these problems. Uh, my guess is probably that the problem might come back in the future, which would be a shame. Now, I've got two issues with this. The first one is to do with McAfee. I don't think they should have charged them for uh, removing this. I think they should have said, well, our software isn't protecting your computer as it should, so we will update the files so that other users don't get infected and uh, we'll remove whatever's causing the issue from your computer free of charge. But they didn't. They charged that that extra money, that extra fee. And I don't think that was very fair. I know they're in business, they have to make money, but I just think that was a bit too much. I think they'd have a better way of doing things if they charged maybe a little bit extra for the phone call for the advice, but then offered the service free of charge. Now, the other issue I've got is how did that malware uh, get onto the computer? And uh, I think the user came to the conclusion that they were sent some uh, attachments on an email from a trusted source though, but maybe that trusted source didn't know where those attachments came from. So somewhere along the line, uh, unknown to the original emailer, um, a virus or a piece of malware had been installed on this laptop. So my advice to you is to protect yourself. There are plenty of options available. There are VPN options, virtual private networks. There are malware applications. There are antivirus programs and keep the definitions up to date. So keep your software up to date and don't click on attachments unless it's from a really well-known trusted source, i.e. the person that created the attachment, not somebody just passing on an attachment through emails to you. I think it's a very dodgy way of conducting business, and if you do open up attachments and you don't know where the original source was, then you are opening up yourselves for trouble and potential threats on your computer. So thanks very much for watching this video. I hope it's helped you a little bit. These little stories are things that I get emailed about and contacted about pretty much every week. So do stay tuned. I'll share more with you as they come in and I'll see you all in the next video.